Welcome back to my channel. This is the first uh, video uh, with as a tutorial for uh, SAS to create some kind of uh, software as a service. Uh, and more specifically, this one is about uh, an overview introduction uh, about how to do RAG, uh, uh, retrieval augmented generation for large language models, uh, LLM, because it's a uh, hot topic at the moment and it's also a low entry barrier for creating something, uh, some, some kind of startup company. The reason why we talk about uh, RAG and LLMs is because uh, when you large language models are limited with the knowledge that has been used by the company or organization that created them at that specific time. So if you want something more uh, specific for uh, a topic or more modern, you need to do something. Either you do, you fine tune the model, you kind of retrain partially with it, or you add something uh, through RAG, uh, uh, like doing some kind of prompt engineering that looks like something like this. So we have a, uh, the new information, the new data set that has been uh, like kind of encoded and embedded in a vector database. And when we run a query, first the query is going through uh, retrieving some kind of uh, where it's in this embedding and then it's uh, creating a better prompt augmented with this uh, given by the what is being found in the vector database. And then at that point, we query the uh, uh, large language model without touching the, uh, the large language model. So we can still do all these things uh, using the online version of the uh, large language model. And this is uh, my ideal architecture at the moment uh, because these things are changing on a weekly basis. So first of all, we have uh, some kind of uh, front-end layer, which can be created by Bootstrap or uh, React or other extension of Node.js that is interacting from HTTP to the API, which is then the API contacting, uh, interacting with the model. The reason why we do this is because like we have, this is the front-end, this is the something like the back-end, and the API is like the interaction between the two. It's like a servant that is getting some uh, requests from uh, someone who wants to eat in a restaurant, for example, and is bringing the order to the cook, and then the cook is cooking something, and then the API is bringing back the dish to the to the customer of the restaurant. It's something. It's, it's there's this this metaphor that has been running around for a while. In practice, it's not also not interacting directly with our large language model. It's first uh, processing the query with some other another layer. Uh, that's uh, I will use uh, a stack because the, the fact that a large language model is essentially it's something that is able to predict uh, uh, the subsequent word is building on the statistic, uh, statistical probability that one word is after the other one uh, statistically. So if you give a, for example, a sentence like artificial intelligence transforming the is some kind of doing some kind of uh, encoding, embedding, and then producing human. So it's giving you the most uh, likely, ac according to the, the machine learning model, most likely word that is supposed to finish the sentence. So it's not uh, uh, an entire chatbot, a large language model. It, uh, you need something that is able to handle the chain of thoughts and also that is kind of um, in charge of, of the overall uh, natural language processing. Then we have some kind of uh, vector database, which is the one that is uh, like where we do the uh, encoding for the text generation, the embedding. And then at that point, uh, there is the interaction with Mistral. Mistral is one model I will use, uh, I would like to use at the moment because it's, although it's, uh, we can use like some version of it, which is uh, like from 7 billion parameters, which will be considered at the, at the moment a medium small language model. It has been shown that uh, uh, even if it's just 7 billion parameters, it's kind of able to outperform a, a lar larger language models that take more time, more space. And it's been shown actually to work very well. So it's more on how the knowledge has been encoded and how the da uh, data set has been used rather than the fact that you have a certain number of parameters. So since this thing is kind of 
might be overwhelming. If you are a full stack developer, probably you have some kind of ideas how to build this. But if it's the first time, if it's the first time that you are seeing this stuff, might be overwhelming because there are so many things here that you have to handle. And when also when you program it, there are codependency, the Python version, this version, then this, this library, this, 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 there are other dependency behind these things that might be uh, really a lot to do at the first time. So I start with something simpler. Uh, there is a library called uh, Chainlit, which is actually very nice because this essentially it's uh, someone created this this tool, which is practically replacing uh, some of, most of these components in one, and is also simplified them. So it's been very nice. So it's just it's handling at the same time the front end and the communication directly to the uh, language model. So there is these things, this, all these things simplified for people. And I will start to the simplest version without uh, using the rag, just to, to see how we combine these two things. And then later we introduce iStack for the processing, processing the query and also doing some kind of embedding, which is uh, inside Aztec, there is also a way to do some kind of um, vector storing. It's not advanced as if we use like uh, uh, something like VB8 or Chroma or some other fancier, uh, more specific uh, vector database, but it's already able to do that. But without even going there, let's do simply launching uh, an application with uh, just using these two components, Chainlit and Mistral. Obviously, we have to we have two ways of handling this. Uh, ah, first of all, I'm assuming we are working on these things on a local machine, and if you have a Python, you need to first of all in get these two requirements. I know it looks ridiculous, but that's actually because uh, generally you have like ten or fifteen uh, requirements. Now you have only two. That's also showing you how easy this thing is. And this is how it will look like a, a simple application. So you need to import just these two, two libraries. Uh, this uh, import OS is simply because I'm loading the, the API key for uh, hacking phase. And, but, and it's, it needs to get this file to, from my system, that's all. And then with the main for this looks like this. So I have two versions of this. One is related to uh, if we want to use fully locally. So this means that the first time you launch this thing is going to download Mistral. And that's why you still need the token because even to download you, you is probably going to ask you the API. And I'm setting also what it's going to use. If it's going to use the CPU or the GPU. And this is just how I'm going to handle uh, asynchronously. Uh, asynchrony means that it's not running sequentially, because, for example, if we were going to have an HTML page that is just waiting until you ask a question, and then when you ask a question, at the moment you ask the question, it's performing this part. It's not going sequentially, just waiting for your uh, action. And then he's simply collecting uh, your prompt and sending it. So everything is mm, managed by this uh, CL dot uh, message, a, a function from uh, Chainlit. And then the same one is getting the answer and is uh, then sending it back. Now, I, if you want to use an even simpler version that I'm going to use now, or maybe because you don't want to download locally, uh, small, uh, uh, this, the language model from Mistral, because it's still like uh, uh, 10, 15 uh, gigabytes. There is this way that, uh, in this way, we are going to simply connect to the endpoint model online through Mistral, do the question and get the answer. And, and plot it, and some. And if you see the chain lead uh, front end, it will look like it's an independent uh, uh, application. So definitely now we need the token because uh, is now is going to use the the token you have available. And when you finish the free ones, is going to they're going to charge you. So be careful because you're essentially using their machine. 
the, the difference that uh, in one in one way, so if you download the model, uh, uh, the electricity is uh, of the machine, the usage of uh, the uh, uh, co uh, fixed costs are on you. In this way, the model is on their machine, so you're using their machine, so you're supposed to pay for their services. And uh, yeah, once again, we have uh, uh, today we need to define the query and to pass the to pass the, again with this uh, function message to send it and get the answer. So we, in fact, you, you see, you get uh, from the, I send the prompt, I query it, query the model, I get the result. Yeah, I'm simply separating a uh, query and result, prompt and result, because it's used to send you uh, both. And then at this point, I simply put it in content, and it will show me on the HTML the answer. Let's see how it looks like. Uh, I The difference is also that I don't uh, run it uh, using uh, uh, Python. So I run it using uh, the, their own command, which is uh, chain lit run and the name of the Python script. Uh, at the moment, it's, conf it's configured by to point to the localhost uh, with the port uh, 8000. And it will look like something like this. Uh, the idea is also that you can, there is a folder where you can kind of add some customization. In fact, normally when you launch it, it's not looking like this. They have their own logo and also there is other things that built on like powered by Chainlit. Why I kind of replace mm, their logo with my logo, then you can customize the title or other messages, then you can change it. So let's try with something easy, like for example, asking two plus two. And then I continue, who is the current president of the USA? And it's telling me correctly, Joe Biden. Now, uh, the thing is that in the court, um, this is all running in my local machine. So I'm querying Mistral. The front end is on my computer, so it's not uh, fully up. Also, because if you want to make a, a full SAS, uh, you need something a bit more than that. Like you need a notification, a way of payment, uh, handling uh, users. This is just really the beginning. But as you can see, I practically loaded uh, uh, an entire application with how many lines of code on. 42 lines of code, so that's really nothing. And apart that, that is not really an SAS, it's, uh, we are still at this level. So in the next video, I will try to go a bit further, adding some um, NPL orchestration and also some vector embedding for the rag, because at the moment this is not rag, this is just using the model as it is, with the knowledge that they have. So we haven't done yet what I promised. I will do that in the next uh, video, but if assuming you are already happy with this, this is already a, an application that yeah, it's on my local host. So you need, uh, apart that you need the uh, overall the other parts of the SAS, to, you need to deploy it other on uh, some kind of web services like uh, Amazon Web Service uh, or something else, or you need to have a physical machine which is, is accessible. Yeah, yeah. In other way, you're not finished. <laughs> so, because this thing is only running on my uh, local host. This is for everything for now, and let's see on the next video when we proceed to the further steps.